was actually out long before Paris is burning. And, you know, because, you know, a lot of people get it confused. You know, they don't know their history, you know. But just to clear the record, you know, Queen was, was filmed way long before uh, the uh, Paris is burning. There's a 10 year differential limits. between Paris is burning and uh, the Queen, yes, sir. Correct. Now, and we had been we had been running the contest for ten years before the queen was made, so you know we went back quite a ways. But you know, I didn't invent anything. You know, I learned what I did from other people and whatever. You know, the only thing I did is made it into something national. Wow, wow, wow! Now, um, in the 1968 uh, drag movie, a uh, queen. Um, what what happened to Monique and Miss Harlow? <clears throat> well, Monique, after she had her sex change, the boy for whom she'd gotten the change didn't want her anymore because uh, now she uh, she didn't have a penis anymore. So um, she ended up killing herself. She was so gorgeous, Monique. I mean, it was it was a wow. heartbreaker. Sorry and who else that. did you ask about? Rest in peace, darling. Wow, that's amazing. Who else did you ask about? Now, now, um... One of, one of the things that, you know, we wanted to say also as well is there was a rumor, you know, we just wanted to clear it up out there, you know, for those who are tuning in. I have some uh, messages stating that um, uh, Papa LaVeja, was she, was she in the 1968 drag movie pageant called Queen? Crystal LaVeja. Not Pepper LaVeja. Crystal LaVeja was in the Queen. Wow. I think that, I think Pepper LaVeja is Crystal LaVeja's daughter, isn't she? Uh, yes, correct. Right. Right. And House of La Beja was absolutely spectacular. I mean, Crystal was magical. Uh, she found housing for the girl. She got uh, medical care for the girl. She was, you know, she was really a champion. Uh, uh, really a champion. I didn't know her at the time that we made the Queen. I got to know her afterward, but I have tremendous respect for her. I think she was a giant. Wow, amazing, beautiful, beautiful journey. That's so beautiful. Well, right down to the opportunity to be able to do your show. Thank you very much. A beautiful thing you're doing. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. We are actually honored to have oh. you on, on the show. Right back at you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of love. A lot of love in the, in the air. <laughs> right back at you guys. Thank yes, you. Yes, darling. Now, you know, let's, let's go into a little bit more detail. You know, let's go back a little bit more. Let's talk about how was the gay life in the village before? Four Stonewall riots. Yes, you were talking a little bit about er that earlier, and uh, my curiosity got piqued. So I actually wanted to know uh, what your experience personally was like uh, before the Stonewall riots, because you were talking about having a couple felonies for cross-dressing. So tell me a little bit more about what that experience was like for you. Well, you know, the cops didn't hesitate to just beat you up, you know, on sight and whatever, and you know, he, you had no recourse. You know, it was just um, your toilet conversation. You didn't exist as a citizen. You had no rights at all. And the cops could just do as they please and they had a final time with it, including, you know, using all sorts of devices like entrapment and stuff like that. But as we can see today, you know, the advent of the cell phone, the camera and whatever, some of those aspects are just as integral to the culture now as they were then. Uh, the only difference is now, you know, it gets out and people know about it. Were there any particular venues that you frequented at the time? To do what there? Were there any particular fr uh, venues that you frequented at the time? Well, I don't know. I mean, I loved the, the Stonewall. I was not there the night of the riot. I was uh, working on Myra Breckenridge. I was in L.A. the time that that happened. And the news in, in L.A. at the time was all about the Sharon Tate murders. But um, the Stonewall, as I understand it, you know, just from, from hearsay, uh, the kids had come down from, you know, Judy Garland had died. Judy Garland was a a great sort of mother figure for the girls looked after so many of us I mean she's a very generous and wonderful human being in that capacity anyway uh, she was uh, she was laid out of the funeral home up here on the Upper East Side and a lot of the girls went from there down to the stone wall and then when the cops came in and harassed them as usual this time the girls had just had enough of it and stood up to it you know and Sylvia Rivera was one of the people that you know was the you know the push the box of cops back and just tired of the crap Work. Thank you so much. Work is right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, work is right. Now, now, that was Silver River. Now, what about Marsha P. Johnson? Marsha P. Johnson was, uh, you know, just as magical as you can imagine. And there are two people I know about right now who are doing documentaries about her. Uh, Marsha P. Johnson was just a 
No, a piece of creative magic. Absolutely brilliant. And will be, I think, very well illuminated with the, with the films that are being made about her. Yes. Uh, uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of time that she was forgotten, but I think that she'll, she's going to be back, darling. She'll be back. Yes. Uh, um, I believe uh, the film you're mentioning is Happy Birthday, Marsha, and uh, that's being produced by uh, Raina Gossett. Yes. So that's I right. definitely look forward for that. Work. Um, that's right. Yes. And Shout the people who are producing it are superb. They're very bright and I think very sensitive to the subject matter. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely terrific. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. Thank you for that. And it's such an honor to see people paying attention. You know what I mean? It was, God, you know, what a difference today makes. Wow. Now... Um, you know, how do you feel about the controversy concerning the new movie? The Stanwell um, movie. I, I, you know, but I think, is, you, you know, no matter how you do it, somebody's going to find something wrong with it. There's some good and all bad, or some bad and all good. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that it's made. I think that's really good. And I think the good things about it are great. And the things that people find to be difficult about it, well, at least they're talking about and thinking about it. So, you know, better that it exists than it doesn't exist, that's for damn sure. I mean, uh, definitely, I, be, I do believe it is a, a double-edged sword because, um, you know, uh, it's definitely good that um, the conversations are being had, you know, around the, the making of the movie and, the, you know, the, the, the historical event. Um, but, you know, again, kind of falls short, you know, not having the authentic representation out there. Um, but Yes, Exactly. Exactly. I think that's spot on. I think it's absolutely true. I mean, it, at least, you know, it exists. And I think that the fact that, you know, it's been illuminated and, you know, being treated as an important subject matter and part of the history is, you know, a big step in the right direction. I mean, it's, it's certainly a very big step for me you know, back in the day, so thank God for it. Right. Yes, thank amen you. to that. <clears throat> also, real quick, um... There are pics in a book called Gay New York by George Chauncey. And um, there are these, on these pics are pictures of paddy wagons and the cops arresting gay men and drag queens, both black and white, at the balls, and mm -hmm. which were underground at that time, of course, and, and back at the gay clubs as well. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. I mean, you know, I mean, it was like the cottage industry. Uh, you know, if they happened to scoop up somebody that had some money, that was good, you know, because they got, the, you know, lots of payoffs from individuals they were able to blackmail them. And uh, for, for the rest, I mean, because there was so little societal attention to what was going on, um, they could just, you know, have their way. It was a, a, a sort of entertainment, you know. I mean, uh, it was, you know, prejudice on, on steroids with a badge. Wow. So in a way, um, these ball events were kind of a, a way of escaping all of that, correct? Yeah. No. No? Yeah. yeah. I mean, a, a, in a way, things are so much better now simply because I have the privilege of being able to talk to you guys on radio. You know what I mean? The fact that it's being talked about in public forum, and that, that in and on to itself, I think, is a big step in our direction. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um... Let's go a little bit back into uh, another controversial uh, rumor before we move on really quick. Um, there was another rumor stating that, um, you know, because of the Crystal LaBeja, you know, uh, what she said in, 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 in Queen, um, you know, a lot of people are, are believing that, you know, Jack, that your balls were, or your drag shows or pageants were rigged. Now, let's clear the record on the air. Let's talk a little bit exactly how the drag pageant function works and goes down. Well, I mean, it, it, the, the situation with a, a contest, the, the judges of a contest for you know, famous people who had, the, you know, their reputations to think about and stuff like that. And uh, I certainly didn't control them, so I, you know, I didn't have any say on what their decision was. They decided what they decided. So, I mean, if it was rigged, it must have been rigged between them because I didn't, certainly wasn't party to it. You know, I, I don't know. Right. I mean, I don't necessarily uh, agree or disagree with how the judges find things, but, uh, you know, they, they were independent people with careers of their own and, you know, like that. 
I don't think it was helpful that they, you know, were famous people and whatever, so, you know, people didn't think they were in our pocket. Wow. Would be the, uh, would this be the first time um, someone asked you about uh, the, the the contest being rigged? The, per- the first time that people asked me about them? Yes. Right, right. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, people <laughs> ask about them all the time, but I guess, you know, just out of, you know, sort of morbid curiosity, you know, what the hell was going on there. But, you know, in a way, you know, I might be the last person to be able to give you a, pr- a, a proper answer because, you know, the thing about which a fish knows least is water. Sure. I was so immersed in the situation, I don't know, that I necessarily have a perspective right. on it. Sure. Right. That was the reason why we asked, because in the community, in our events, and our sports, you know, here, like such as the ballroom scene or stuff like this in the community of LGBT, uh, you know, we have a lot of controversy when it comes to, you know, the judges panel and favoritism and, you know, uh, events being rigged and set up for certain winners and stuff like that. So, you know, we were just wanting to get a balanced scale of more or less, you know, did we have that back in the day? Was it a big thing to do? Was it already incorporated or is it something that developed later on? throughout the years? Well, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, it depends on the situation. You probably have to take them, you know, one situation at a time. Uh, the way I did my contest, um, we had celebrity judges, and, you know, what they decided is what they decided. Um, where other people did their contest was their business. I don't, you know, I don't know. I didn't run their contest. I only ran mine. Um, I, I think that, you know, the rumors about contests being fixed are, you know, probably as real or not as real as, you know, people see them to be. I don't, you know, it's too so complicated for me. If they were fixed, though, I wasn't the one that was fixing them. We had celebrity judges, and they were the ones to decide who won. So then maybe it would you know? be easier to explain how you would, um, how you would go about the process of, um, picking the judges, how would you... Um, would the well, we went after lots of people that had celebrity, and, you know, once in a while somebody said yes, and that's where they came from. You know, I mean, a lot of people turned us down, obviously. Okay. But, uh, you know, when we were fortunate enough to get someone to give us an okay, uh, Judy Garland was a judge for us a number of times. Um, uh, uh, or was a judge for us, uh, you, know, you know, different people over the years, you know, we were just lucky enough to get, and I'm big fans of them, you know, and I was really glad when... You know, they were willing to do it. Yes, please. Yes, please. Carl Bailey was a wonderful judge. He's a, he's a career, and these were also people who, you know, besides being celebrities, also, you know, happened to know the girls. You know, they weren't necessarily part of the community, but they were certainly idols to the community. I mean, certainly they were to me. Now, earlier you spoke a little bit about Monique, um, but you didn't speak about uh, Miss Harlow. Yes, we forgot about Miss Harlow. Let's talk a little bit about Miss Harlow, darling. Oh, Miss Harlow. Well... Uh, Harlow is a um, lady with a very private life. Um, she uh, she lives in New Jersey with her sister. Uh, she is still absolutely gorgeous and brilliant and terrific. Um, she is she is uh, definitely not interested in you know doing uh, stories about her past, as it were, because even though it was well illuminated at the time, at this point in her life, Harlow just wants to live her life as Rachel, and, you know, forget that other stuff. And that's okay, you know, she, it's her life, she can do what she pleases. Understand yeah, understandable. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. I mean, I must tell you one thing, you know, I mean, she was always beautiful, and to this day, still, I mean, she's such a beauty, such a beauty, inside and out, just a wonderful human being. Now, you know, uh, this is going to be a tough question, Jack, but you know, I got to ask you. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, we know that Harlow ended up winning, and Chris mm-hmm. Asia, she went into a rant. Um, mm-hmm. You know, do you feel that because of her uh, image and, 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 and who she was, did that affect her vote, or did they just simply not vote for her? I, I think that Crystal, I mean, in, in terms of the, the film, I think Crystal made the film what it was, you know. I mean, Crystal's uh, show of, of uh, indignant, I mean, it was just wonderful, yes, please. I, I had nothing to take about it. I mean, I think that Crystal reacted the way she reacted, you know. I just she had a license to do that. You know, she's free to do what she damn well pleased. And uh, because I had no control over, you know, what the judges did, you know, it was their decision. But how she reacted to it, that was her decision. And the way the contest operated, I mean, on film or not, I mean, people just 
did what they did. I mean, we lived in a world where enough people were like breathing down our necks, told us what to do. So, right, right. you know, the more loosey goosey we could be, the better. Wow. <laughs> that has been, been